Hi, YouTube. I hope you're doing well today. This is my second time doing this sermon. I did this whole sermon this morning, and I preached to myself because it didn't work. <laughs> um, hey, Facebook. I'm doing this on Facebook, so I should do this first. So, hey, Facebook. Hey, YouTube. Hey, everyone that will watch today and in the future. Today's sermon will be called um, Misplaced Pedestal. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for what you've done for me, what you've done for us today. I thank you for your holy presence, and I submit myself to the cross, God. I pray, Lord God, that you will speak from the very bowels of heaven and just do what only you can do, God. You are the omnipotent and the omniscient, God. We bless you. We praise you today. In the name of Jesus, amen. So, guys, um, last week when I was in church, um, my, my pastor was talking about... Um, he was, he was preaching and he was preaching and he was preaching and he was, um, talking. And often in preaching for me, it's not the whole sermon that gets me, it's a line in the sermon. And last week's line that got me, he was talking about, uh, church hurt, and why is it church hurt and not human hurt? Um, which I understand and I agree with to a certain extent, because because humans can hurt you anywhere you go, um, whether you are whether it's a coworker at your job whether it's someone in your family, whether it's someone at the grocery store, you know. But I think why, why church hurt is so devastating is because um, uh, people look at it as a higher level because we're supposed to... Um, because we serve the God that we do, um, in the people that don't go to church or just have just um, just started going to church, think that it's going to be better in there. Going to be better than than. Um, people who don't go to church. So when they get hurt or something happens, it's so devastating because um, in their minds, we are supposed to do better, think better, be better. But what people don't understand most times are just because we go to church doesn't mean we're not human. Doesn't mean we don't have the same. Um, doesn't mean we don't have the same uh, propensities and struggles as people who don't go to church do. The only difference is when we're in a struggle as believers, we know we're not alone. We know that there's somebody in it with us. We know that there's God, God is with us. And um, God is with us and he is working all things for good. And we know that things aren't hopeless. We know that everything is teaching us something. And I think through the years though, we've We've made the church look like this kind of, um, not we've, but the thought about the church is 
that it's got a higher standard. But we have to understand that the church is is full of human beings. And yes, uh, God's standards are his standards. But we in the church are human beings. And um, why I called this sermon misplaced pedestals is that sometimes we I found um, that most people um, subliminally or outwardly put um, church people um, as to be better than themselves because we serve a God that's infinite. We serve a God that's great and that's true. But we who serve him are still human. And not that we don't have to have standards. We do. We certainly do when God has standards. But in those standards, we need to recognize that people who go to church and pastors, they're still human with the same struggles, same faults stumbling and 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 um just trying to feel our way through life life and knowing that we have a God that loves us and you know sometimes um with great light comes great heat so the more you have the spotlight on you is the greater the heat is. And um, so, so celebrities, pastors, all of that, they have a, they have great light, but with great light comes great heat. And sometimes the heat gets too hot. And you're just saying, God, how can I how can I deal with this? And sometimes um, it's hard balancing the light, b- balancing the person with the gift, you know, because some because most times the I believe the issue is. Um, we wor- we worship the person and not understanding that it's a gift you're seeing. When you see me here and when you're when you watch me online, it isn't and a lot of people say this, but they say it in false humility. It isn't me, it is God. Um, and like people say, no, it is you, but it it is um, it is you. Yes, it is me, but what you're seeing now, the shell is me. the the shell is me. It's my body, it's my hands and it's my mouth, but for right now, the gifting in me is what you're seeing. So you're not seeing Rachel, the person, with all her flaws and with all her things she's trying to work out and her kind of irresponsibility when it comes to those things and whatever. What you're seeing now is is the gift working through the vessel, and I I may say something that will absolutely change your life, and that is awesome, that is wonderful, that is what I'm called to do, uh, that is what I love to do. That's why I started this thing, but don't get it confused. I am just as flawed 
as you are. And same thing when you see an actor or a singer. What you're seeing is their gift at work. What you're seeing is the gift at work. You're not seeing the person. And, you know, when you... There's there's a problem when you... People tend to confuse the person with the gift. And, you know, what you th- when you think that person is great because of what what they said or their when you see them in their time of gifting when they're preaching or when they're praying that's the time of gifting that's when their gift is working in them and you're like wow that person is incredible that's incredible no they're the way God is using their gift is incredible. The way God is using their hands or their gift for speaking is incredible. And and I heard somebody uh, say the other day, um, it's a thing of false humility when you when you um, hear somebody say no. It's not me, it's God. And, and that is true to a certain extent. And that is, it is also true that it is you um, that God is working through. But what I've come to now is to say, it's an honor that he used my gift to bless you. Because that, that it, that's what it is. Uh, preaching is one of the gifts that God has given me to to uh, bless people, uh, but it doesn't mean that I'm not a person with human failings and things that I'm working out. So when you see me and I'm not on YouTube and I'm just you know on on the street or at the grocery store, I'm not going to, to, uh, I'm not going to, um, act like I'm preaching to you. I'm just at the grocery store or whatever I'm doing. At that moment, I'm not operating in my gift. Although some gifts can happen at any time, but generally, at that time, you're just seeing Rachel, and I think we need to, uh, um, we need to, uh, as a people, respect, um, the gift but see the person and understand when you get hyped on them preaching or praying, you're getting hyped on their gifting. You're not seeing them. And I think, and I think sometimes uh, preachers get c- caught and confused in, in, in a gifting and what they're going through as a person, which could be two different things. You could be a wonderful orator, wonderful preacher, and your life be a mess. Because why? Because preaching is your gifting. And what you're going through as a, per- as a husband or a wife that's different. That's a human failing. That's a human thing. Um, if if I was in person with you right now, I would say touch your neighbor and say, it's a human thing. And I think we need to start seeing people as humans and understand that it is their gift for acting, gift for singing, 
gift for producing, gift for preaching that we're seeing, and it's not really um, the person. The problem comes to when when you feel because you have a gift, you constantly have to live up to that gift. You constantly have to be on all the time. You have to know every scripture in the Bible or have to uh, be ready to perform at any time, any moment. No, no you don't, because I believe when your gift, although your gift can be operational at any time, but when your gift is fully operational, that is a spirit that comes on you. That is the Holy Spirit working through you. And when you are when you are just out and about, not to say the Holy Spirit leaves you, but that anointing may not be as heavy. So if I if I live near Juanita Bynum, <laughs> and for those of you who don't know who Juanita Bynum is, she's a wonderful uh, uh, a true prophet, and she's she's amazing. So if I lived near Juanita Bynum, and I saw Juanita at the grocery store in the fruits section, and I just saw her picking up some apples, and I said, oh my God, will you pray for me? Oh my God, I need prayer. And she was, she, she has every right to say, uh, no, no, thank you. I, I'm busy, or I'm sorry. That's not the proper, proper thing to do right now. And she has every right to say that because at that time, she is Juanita. She's not prophetess by them. She's not operating in her gifting at that time. Like, unless the, the Lord uh, wants to do something supernatural, and he might. But um, if he doesn't, that's his right uh, not to do that. Because he gave her that gift. And... Um, So, if you live near an actor, and they're out with their children, you're like, oh my god, this is this actor! And you start following them and wanting an autograph for them, I would argue, let them be a person at that time, because at that time, they're just up. They're not operating in their gifting. They are just a regular person up for a walk. I always said this, and this happened when I saw Gordon Pittman, uh, which is the late, great Canadian actor. He was in Away From Her and a couple of other movies, and he did stuff for Plan Canada as well. He... He um, passed now. But when I saw him at Golden Griddle with a friend, I just waved, hello, Mr. Pittman, because I knew at that time he wasn't an actor. He was just a person out with a friend. You see? His gifting is acting, but but there is a person in there. And sometimes we forget that those people that we see are first people, and we celebrate them because they have a gifting to act or sing or they're in the public eye, but 
we don't understand that it's the gifting we are celebrating. And it's not the person because we don't know the person. We have no idea who that person is. We know who they are when they're operating in their gifting, whether it's to sing or act or preach or pray or do real estate. We know who that person is when they're doing them. So it's a misplaced pedestal that we put people on. And the only, the only pedestal, the only um, being that should be on a pedestal that we should honor and praise is Jesus Christ. So today, he longs to be on that pedestal. So replace whatever thing or whatever person you're putting on the pedestal and replace it with God. And sometimes we don't only put people on pedestals higher than anything else. We put things on pedestals. And you'll say, Rachel, how do you know when you're putting something on a pedestal? Well, you would know because they it come it's the thing you spend your most time on. It's the thing that you think about most. It's the thing that you give your attention to the most. It's not the thing that you say. It's the thing that you give your most attention to. That is, that is who, that is what you really praise. Like you could say, you can sing all of those praise songs all you want, but. To find out who you really praise, I just have to look at your life and your bank account to see what you spend your most time on, who is the most important to you. And and I struggle with this too, but but I'm getting better and I and I understand now that that I have to that if I put God in the center of my life, everything revolves the way it's supposed to. Everything is not smooth all the time. Oh, no, it's not. But it is so... It is a learning experience and a learning experience that may not always feel, feel pleasant. But even if it doesn't feel pleasant, I'm learning... Uh, to enjoy it, and I'm learning that it's okay to stumble. I'm learning that it's okay to make mistakes. I'm learning that it's okay to admit that I was wrong and stubborn. <laughs> I'm learning that it's that it's okay to be human. To to um, it it's okay to see my gifting. And honor my gifting. And also know that I'm a person. And I'm allowed to be both. I'm allowed to be gifted. And I'm allowed to be a person as well. And I've, I've learned that it's okay to be both. And I, I've learned that God has created me as both. And uh, he is just. Um, so good to me, and I and I love it, and it's just so amazed, amazing. Um, because I think, because I think when we we mistake the celebrity, especially for their gift, because we think if you have a great gift then you must be a phenomenal person everywhere. But a gifting is just a gifting that God has given you. It's not the whole you. The, the, the gifting might be singing or preaching or praying, but it doesn't mean you don't have other issues. And you probably do have other issues, and those other issues are probably greater 
because the devil's trying to get you to stop in your gifting. So I sincerely believe that that um, it is time to put God back where he belongs and put everything else where it belongs. And aside from God being the center of your life, um, you may need to pray about where to put certain priorities, and he will help you. If you make God center of your life, people say put God first. I I, um, take what it said in this, this shack. It said put God center where everything revolves around him. And he will teach you the priorities of your life. The reason why you are struggling in your life is because of um, a lack of priorities and a lack of uh, knowing where to put things in your life. And I've struggled with this too. Um, But we just have to understand that it's human to make mistakes, and in our mistakes, God will be with us, and he loves us, and he'll never stop loving us, and everything he's doing is for our better, betterment. It may not feel better, we may be stumbling around and feeding our way, but at the end of the day, it it will be for our betterment. And uh, I, I really appreciate you for just sticking with me today. And hopefully you got something out of this sermon uh, called Perfect, uh, called Misplaced Pedestal. And hopefully you'll put that pedestal in the right place today. Put God center and everything else revolves around that. And you'll be surprised when you put God at the center of your life. Uh, you, your life may not always be easy, but um, he will teach you how to fix it. He'll teach you places where you where you need to work on. And it, it's just awesome how lovely your life is when you put God at the center. And things won't always feel lovely, but in the end, it will just make a world of difference. And you'll realize that you're never alone, that he is always with you. And he is always ready to uh, help you. He'll be your source of strength and comfort and coming. He'll be whatever you need. And he'll teach you. He'll teach you who to trust. He'll teach you what relationships to get into. Because he, he will lead you to relationships that you need to operate through your life. Because a lot of people have been doing their relational life, their romantic relational life, their friendship life, their co-worker life without God. And today he says, no, don't do it without me. He says, I want to be involved in every area of your life. You need me in every area of your life. Stop thinking God is just for church. And invite him into every area of, of your life. And it and it won't always be easy, but in in the not easy times, it'll be well worth it. In the times when you're struggling and crying on the floor, it'll be well worth it. Thank you guys for being with me today. I really appreciate it and I really appreciate you. 
God bless. Bye. This sermon will be called Misplaced Pedestal. Thanks, guys. Bye. When peace like a river attended my way when sorrows like sea and roll whatever my lot thou hast taught me to say it is well, is well with my soul, it is well with my soul. With my soul, it is well, it is well, it is well with my soul, it is well with my song with my soul it is well it is well it is well my soul I don't know who this is for but I feel in my spirit to say to someone, it is well, it is well today, whatever you're going through, it won't crush you, it won't break you, and the Lord wants me to tell you, it is well, it it may not look like he's there, it looks like he's gone, you're crying, you're praying, you're screaming, you're saying, please help me, this, this doesn't seem to be over. The Lord wants me to say today to you, it is well. It is well. It is well. He said, sleep well. Some of you have been up all night, not been able to sleep because this thing has has been worrying you and keeping you up. The Lord said, Receive my sweet sleep and know that it is well, not only with your soul, but with your body and with your family. The Lord wants me to say, it is well. 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 Um, the Lord has, has come to give you rest. Receive his rest. Receive rest. Receive his peace. Receive his grace. Receive receive his wholeness. Receive his forgiveness. Sometimes it's not that God isn't giving it, but he has given it, but we don't re- but we haven't received it. The gift his gift is not the problem. Our reception and perception is the problem because we don't feel that we deserve it so we we don't receive it although he's given it it's like if an amazon package came from a friend and we we um it was on our door but we didn't open the door and take up the package then we couldn't use it. We didn't receive it, although it was sent. 
And sometimes it's something that we've been waiting for forever, but we don't receive it. Um, the Lord is saying, receive, receive my peace, receive sweet sleep, receive my grace. Receive it, it's there for you today. And all you have to do to receive it is say, Lord, I receive your gift and have a heart of reception. For me, um, um, I, I don't uh, say the sinner's prayer simply because I think that the Lord wants to hear your voice. So if there's anybody out there who doesn't know the Lord, there's no specific prayer, no specific way to do it. Um, he just wants to hear your heart. Even if you're not sure of him, whatever. Um, he just wants to hear you and your voice. He's, uh, Paul says to believe and confess. Um, but I, I, I was thinking about, about it and got a revelation that even if you don't believe and confess that he is Lord, if you say just, Lord, I need you, I don't understand, I don't even know if you're real, he'll come in and shift your life just like that. And it won't always be easy, but it will be worth it. He loves you so much today. Today, He loves you as his son and daughter, so receive his love. Don't leave the package on the door, receive it, receive it, receive it, receive it, receive it. In the name of Jesus, receive that gift, receive that package. It's free. You don't have to pay shipping. You don't have to pay handling. You don't have to pay any price for it. He paid the price for it. And what that price was, was his life and the the life of his son, Jesus. And all he wants you to do today is receive his gift. Thank you, Jesus, for, for what you've done. Thank you, Jesus, for just sending your son to die on that cross. And I pray for every heart. I pray for every spirit that's thinking of um, receiving you today. I pray that you prick their hearts like you you did in the book of Acts. I pray that there's a spirit a stirring in their spirit, Lord, that, that they need you. And I pray that there will be an outcry today of people that need you, of people that say, Lord, my life is a mess, or... Or my life is going great, but something something Rachel said in this video really pricked me. And I don't understand it. And you may not understand right now what you're experiencing. And that's okay. It's the Lord knocking on the door of your heart saying, will you let me in? And all you have to do is say, yes. And sometimes we act like surrendering is simple, but it's not giving up your will for his. It's not simple at all. It's very difficult. But if you have a heart of surrender, he'll help you get to complete surrender, where you just give over everything to God. And it may be a wrestling match for a while where you're wrestling with him. But it will be worth it. And and the life of a believer comes with a lot of wrestling. But at the end of the day, it's worth it. Because you know you're not alone. You know you have Jesus by your side. And you know that Jesus has your back. 
And he wants you to know again that he loves you. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Bless your name, God. I'll see you next week, guys. Bye. It is well with my soul. With my soul, it is well. It is well. It is well with my soul. It is well with your soul. With your soul, I declare it is well, it is well, it is well with your soul, I declare it is well. With your soul, with your soul, it is well, it is well, it is well with your soul. When I was in Bible college, they taught us that the soul is your mind, will, and your emotions. So, so the Lord says to tell you that when I say it is well with your soul, I mean it is well with your mind. It is well with all the stuff that is going on your in your mind, all the worry about your children, all your, the worry about your finances, all everything in your mind, even the chemicals in your brain that are not working right, it is well, and I declare it is well uh, with them, even with the help of medicine, it is well. Um, your will, if you're stubborn like I, like I, am sometimes I, I'm like no I'm like a baby I'm like no it's mine it's mine it is well with your stubborn will um, it is well with your emotions any emotional upheaval right now I declare it as well it is well with everything in your soul it is well with your mind, it is well with your will, it is well with your emotions. Your, your mind meaning your internal thoughts. Uh, what you're thinking. What you're trying to analyze. Because some of us are total analyzers. We, we analyze everything. And the Lord says, whatever... You're overanalyzing whatever you're, whatever you're contemplating. It is what was that? And like I said, your will is your stubborn will. It's well, it's my way or the highway. It is well with that. When I say it is well, I'm saying God is solving all the issues with that. And he may be using other people to solve it. He may be using medications to solve it in the case of your emotions. He may be using uh, his word alone to solve it. It is well. And with your emotions, it is well too. It is well. It may not be perfect. It may not be pretty, but it is well. He is solving it. And he may solve it through a process, and he may solve it immediately. But however way he solves the problems with your mind, will, and emotions, with your soul, it is well. Thank you, Lord, for that word. 
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. You are God. You are great. You are worthy. We worship you. Our response is worship. Our response to that word is worship. We bless you in the name of Jesus. Bye, guys. It is well. It is.